stimulants narcotics and old age by george miller beard eighteen thirty nine to eighteen eighty three coffee break collection twenty old age this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org stimulants narcotics and old age published in eighteen eighty three their effects vary with the age the old bear them better than the young those who carefully study their own constitutions find that varieties and preparations of food which at one time of life are beneficial at others prove injurious and all the world knows that the diet of infants and children must be radically different from that of adults and that adults in turn must modify their habits of eating in extreme old age negative food stimulants and narcotics is much more variable in its effects at different periods of life than positive food and hence there is need of greater caution in using it infants and children do not need stimulants and narcotics and should not ordinarily be allowed even the weaker varieties the young of both sexes whose growth is not completed are more liable to be harmed than benefited by a free indulgence of these substances for these three important reasons first while the system is growing it needs abundance of positive nutriment to supply the rapid changes of tissue rather than negative which lessens the appetite for other food secondly their brains are much less actively employed than those of maturer age and therefore have less need of the sustaining influence of stimulants and narcotics and thirdly there is great danger that they may acquire habits of overindulgence and become slaves to appetite since at this time of life they have neither the full development of moral character nor yet the manifold restraining diverting and counteracting influences and duties that enable adults to use them in a wise and decorous moderation the tendency with many parents in this country certainly is to allow their young children to form habits of using tea and coffee much too early and the tendency with young men in every walk of life is to acquire the habit of smoking chewing and drinking strong liquors at a time when they have little need of these substances and when they have not the moral force to resist their seductive and bewitching influences i have long thought and frequently stated that if our young people would avoid the formation of habits of free indulgence in stimulants and narcotics until the growth is completed a period which variously ranges between the age of twenty and thirty in temperance and most of the physical disease that results from these substances would in the course of the next generation be well nigh unknown for habitual intemperance like most other crimes is usually the result of habits formed in youth especially beneficial in old age on the other hand some of these articles of which we have been speaking which in youth are of such doubtful advantage in the decline of life are as beneficial as they are grateful by gently stimulating the jaded digestion by giving tone to the exhausted brain by equalizing the languid and unbalanced circulation and by economizing the wasted tissues they beneficially and efficiently sustain the system when the desire for positive nutriment has long been blunted and the forces of assimilation have well nigh lost their mysterious power thus they serve a most beneficial purpose to sweeten and prolong the evening twilight of existence to make less perceptible the slow darkening of the lights in the windows more gently and easy the sure descent into the depths of the dark unknown surprise is often expressed by individuals that as they advance in age they can use with benefit or at least without injury substances which in their previous history they could not bear our bodies change continually without regard to age they are changed by the weather 
by our occupation and duties by our joys and woes by our diet and sleep or the want of it by the varied conditions of disease by all that makes up our life they are changed even when we are the least subject to external influences the elaborate chemistry of the body never rests i am not the same individual today that i was yesterday tomorrow i shall be different from what i am today a month hence i shall be a new being thus in the course of life i personate numberless different and even opposite physical characters a stimulant or narcotic therefore which i take today affects me very differently from what it did last year because i am not the same person professor huxley tells a story that when he was quite young he never could bear to smoke and all attempts to do so left him on the floor of the room where he made the attempt recently in middle life he has tried it and finds in it enjoyment without apparent harm there is a story of a greek philosopher who vowed that he never would call in a doctor but when he was sick he sent for one and when he was reproached for his inconsistency he replied but i am not the same person that i was today i cannot take coffee without immediate and perceptible injury ten years hence i may indulge in it freely without harm time was perchance when tea kept me awake the whole night long but now it seems rather to dispose me to slumber you wonder that the cigar in which you formerly indulged without discomfort now excites a myriad unpleasant and harassing symptoms that the glass of cider which once caused you intense headache now serves as a tonic and appetizer to the rule that infants and children should abstain from stimulants and narcotics there would appear to be some exceptions of race and climate and condition for in some countries babies use wine and beer and little children of both sexes smoke cigars and the query is not raised whether they are or are not injured by so doing End of stimulants and narcotics in old age